Facelift surgery, or ridectomy surgery, is a surgery that corrects facial ptosis or facial drooping. As we age, we all lose volume in our face, along with gravity and time, cause the face to droop or become sullen looking. So who's a good candidate for facelift surgery? Well, if you're healthy, uh, you're already on your way to being a good candidate. We need to see you in the office to evaluate the facial structure and what your concerns are. Very often the concerns that bring people to, to have an evaluation for facelift surgery are either jowling in this area, ptosis or drooping in this area, excess skin or is what we call the chicken neck sometimes, is all reasons to have facelift surgery. There are several different types of facelift surgeries. We do everything from full facelifts, mini lifts, to just plain neck lifts. The difference is how aggressive and how much correction is needed. For a neck lift, the, the area that we're correcting is literally from the jawline down. And what that's doing is correcting the crepiness of the neck as well as the what we call mental angle. So this submental region from the chin down to the, the mid-neck is called the submentum. And very often as we age, that area changes. What we do with a neck lift is aim to recreate the way the neck looked years ago. A mini lift takes the neck into account and then the lower jaw line. Very commonly people have jowling in this area as well as a blunted or, or crepey neck. The mini lift will address that. And then a full face lift would address both the neck, the jaw line, as well as part of the mid face. And what we're doing with the full face lift is really repositioning the entire face. We're bringing the cheeks back up, we're bringing the, the jaw line back into a crisp and sharp jaw line, and then we're getting rid of the crepiness of the neck as well as reconstructing the submental angle. The differences in the three facelifts that I described um, come down to the aggressiveness of the surgery. There are also different techniques that we use for all three of these procedures. The neck lift very often is done with just a small incision from the front of the ear, goes around the ear, and into the hairline here. A mini lift, the extension of that, of that incision would be up to this thing, which is called the tragus. And then a full face lift, the incision comes all the way up to the hairline up here, back down, around, and into the hairline. The beauty of these procedures is, if done correctly, the incision lines are virtually invisible for all three of them. Some of these can be done in the office, others we ask to do in the operating room. And once again, it's a very individualized thing. I would ask you to come in and sit down and talk about it before we would make a decision on where we could do this kind of a procedure. The procedures are done either under local anesthetic, which is just a few injections in our procedure room in the office, can be done with what we call conscious sedation, which is the same as a colonoscopy or sometimes an esophagoscopy. There's no intubation, which is the breathing tube. And patients often get up and go home and feel great within an hour or two after surgery. We also do some of these procedures under full general anesthesia as some people do prefer that. After your surgery, I'll see you the next day in the office. You'll have a special dressing or head wrap that we put on the day of surgery. The next day, you'll come in, you'll see the office staff and myself, and we'll take the dressing down. We'll check all the incision lines and make sure that everything's healing and looking great. After the surgery, what you can expect is a little bit of facial swelling. Everybody's different. Some people swell a little bit more than others. Some people bruise a little bit. So taking the norm into consideration, most people have roughly about a week of swelling. The swelling can extend in all of the operative field and also down into the neck. Sometimes there's also bruising. Generally, that's very mild though. Usually within a week to two weeks, most of the swelling and bruising is gone. That doesn't mean all of it's gone, but most of it's gone. Enough of the bruising is gone within two weeks that you can return to work and normal activity. Sometimes the bruising will stay a little bit longer, but we can usually cover that up with a little makeup. 
depending on the type of surgery that we do, whether it's the facelift, the mini lift, or the neck lift, the recovery times are a little bit different. For the neck lift or for the mini lift, the, there's a shortened healing time. And usually within seven to 10 days, patients are back at work, back in normal uh, daily activities, and really nobody is any, any the wiser that you had any surgery. A full facelift is a little bit longer. That usually is somewhere between 10 and 14 days. Usually I tell patients that if they really don't want anybody to know what they've done, 10 to 14 days and they're back to work and nobody has any idea.